Welcome to the Australian Biocommons webinar series. My name is Patrick Capon and I'm the Australian Biocommons Science Communication Officer and I will be your host for today. In this series, we share useful information about the latest digital techniques, data and tools for the life sciences research community. Each month we hear from local and international experts who present on a bioinformatics topic that we hope will support Australian researchers to deliver their best environmental, agricultural and medical research. You can keep up with the latest from the Australian Biocommons news and events through the channels listed on your screen. Before we begin today, we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. In my case, this is the first peoples of the River Murray and Mallee region. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Today, we're thrilled to welcome Dr. Thomas Payne to speak to us about metabolites. Thomas is a curator within the metabolomics team at EMBL EBI, and he's responsible for meta metabolites. As a curator, he ensures the submission and reuse of quality metabolomics data through close interaction with the metabolomics community, development of standards, and provision of training. Thomas's past experience includes a bioinformatics and computational research associate role at the University of Nebraska Lincoln Center, working on the large scale computational analysis of metabolomics, lipidomics and proteomics data, and he holds a PhD in metabolomic phenotyping from Imperial College London. That's all from me for now. Uh, I'll hand over to Thomas to start the presentation. Um, hi, so um, yeah, welcome to um, the presentation. We like and welcome to Metabolites. We like to say it's the home for metabolomic experiments and derived information. Um, yeah, uh, as Padre said, I'm Thomas. I'm part of the metabolomics team at um, Ember EBI, and um, Ember EBI is the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, um, on, and uh, specifically the European um, Bioinformatics Institute. And um, I'm a curator um, for Metabolites. Um, the aim here is not only to um, make you familiar with submissions, so it's like the metadata, the data standards and study validation, but also comfortable to consume and reuse public uh, metabolomics data. You know, every day new data is becoming available on metabolites. You know, this is primed to be explored, you know, repurposed, concatenated and so on. To um, begin, I just wanted to introduce um, Emble EBI. Um, uh, uh, Ember EBI, we focus on bioinformatics and big data for life sciences. We manage uh, more than 40 open data resources and regularly used by, you know, over 40 million scientists around the world. And our vision is to benefit uh, humankind by advancing scientific discovery and impact through bioinformatics. Um, and we're part of, we are one of the six sites of the um, Ember, which is, you know, um, and we're a nonprofit organization funded by over, mem um, over 20 member states. What does that really mean? Well, Ember EBI is all about open access science, you know, publicly available data. The goal is to ensure that the growing body of information for molecular biology and genome research is conveniently accessible to all facets of the European scientific and biotechnology communities in ways we, we pr promote scientific progress and global competitiveness. So that really is making, you know, and biological based data open source and available to all and the omics generates a vast amount of data and metabolomics is no exception hopefully i don't need to dwell too long on this slide just to tell you that you know there are many benefits to data sharing from it greatly um, accelerates research across the life sciences increases scientific um, re reliability reproducibility traceability enables scientists to react quickly and build upon existing research you know it encourages collaboration increases vis visibility of research and impact and often nowadays it's a requirement for um, grant and publications uh, and then more recently the fair data principles were developed and this was to um, address an urgent need to improve the infrastructure supporting the reuse of scientific data so this was a, um, a diverse set of stakeholders from you know, academia industry funding agencies, publishers, they, they came together and um, designed to jointly endorse a concise and measurable set of data principles. Um, with, and this is specific emphasis on enhancing the availability, the uh, ability of machines to automatically find and use the data. 
um, in addition to supporting its reuse by humans. And, and, and this really means about open data, about findable, where, where can I find data accessible is, is how can I access and download the data and interoperable can um, the data be analyzed by different machines, different humans and reusable and reusable is the actual data reusable. And for data management and, and, and metabolomics is this, um, for data management in general, this means, you know, unique, um, resolvable, persistent identifiers, index data repositories, defined protocols for access and security, um, data associated with their providence and traceability. You know, this means rich, accessible metadata, um, terms searchable by humans and machines, controlled vocabulary, you know, ontologies to make things interoperable, links to other resources and, and meeting community standards. Um, so the, so um, the question become, can metabolomics learn from other omics techniques and not repeat many of the same mistakes? So, you, you know, learning from what came before, can we try, can we stay ahead of the curve and, you know, look to develop good protocols and reporting systems? Can we support the integrity of the data? Can we help develop tools? And can we make the research available to aid um, future developments? Um, before this though, let's just take a minute or two to define what we're talking about. Um, so when we talk about the metabolite, we talk about a substance formed in or necessary for metabolism. When we talk about the metabolome, we talk about the total number of metabolites present within an organism, cell or tissue. And when we talk about metabolomics, we talk about the scientific study of a set of metabolites present within an organism, cell or tissue. And why do we care? Because um, metabolites are the building blocks for larger biochemical as well as cellular function involved in enzyme cat cat enzyme catalyzed reactions, chemical reactions, and they're essential for life. You know, there are, there are primary metabolites. These are directly involved in the normal growth, development, and regulation, and re uh, reproduction. And then there are the secondary metabolites. These are, these are not required for primary um, processes, but have an important ecological role or other functions. And in general, the metabolomic fields relies on two advanced analytical chemistry techniques. So these are often mass spectrometry um, and nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. And this is because researchers are dealing with biological samples or complex mixtures. So there's a vast range of chemical structures, properties or concentrations. There's no single um, analysis, um, which will work for all metabolites. So you need multiple methods to, to profile comprehensive um, coverage. And often um, selection is a compromise between sensitivity, speed, selectivity, cost, and so on. Metabolomics can be applied across agriculture, food, and health. You know, for example, um, research in agriculture, including crop protection and engineering, and uh, looking at salt and drought tolerance, plant defenses. Um, metabolomics can be applied in the food industry to for product and stress testing. Um, such as water control, water quality control, pesticides, and identification of um, potentially harmful bacteria strains, and and probably most um, pre prevalent to us is is healthcare, medical diagnostics in healthcare, and future applications in um, personalized medicine. There are various types of resources available for metabolomics. Um, so there are spectral libraries such as uh, Metlinist, MassBank, Mona, and Emza Cloud, GMPS. There are analysis tools such as Metabolo Analyst, the workflow for metabolomics, XMS Online. Uh, there are metabolite knowledge bases such as HMDB, KEG, Reactome, Lipid Maps, and there are repositories such as Metabolites, Metabolomics Workbench, uh, MetaboBank, and GMPS Massive. Um, so talking of that, uh, metabolites, uh, metabolites can be found at ebi.ac.uk forward slash metabolites. Uh, metabolites is an open source and comprised of two layers. It's a study repository that enables the metabolomics community to share findings, data and protocols. And two, it's, it's a reference library 
or a tabulate knowledge base of curated knowledge about metabolites that also links to the database KEBI, which is the chemical entities of biological interest, um, also at EMBL EBI. Um, at Metabolites, our mission is to provide the scientific community with a comprehensive and high quality, freely accessible resource. So um, we also develop training courses um, and other resources for the community. And, and we, as well as we actively promote metabolomics research. As one of the largest sets of publicly available metabolomics data, um, Metabolite sees users from across the globe, um, Ch USA, China, Europe, um, across academia, industry, healthcare, governments, and, and nonprofits, um, as well as across domains, you know, you know health, um, medicine, toxicology, agriculture, microbiome, ecosystems, and, and environmental exposures and such. You know, this is, for example, uh, Metabolon, the UK National Phenome Center, the Max Planck Institute, um, the Pacific Northwest uh, National Laboratory, for example. Uh, Metabolites also sees submissions from across the globe. Again, um, China, USA, UK, Germany, France. Uh, we actually have 100 to uh, countries in total. We um, are seeing submission volumes increase annually with over 2,472 submissions last year in 2023. Um, we host data across um, close now to 70, um, 7,000 different organisms and organism part pairs. Um, this is 170 terabytes in total um, and a significant portion now um, human-based research and the model organisms. Um, studies hosted in metabolites support publications in journals um, such as Nature and um, Pillars um, Frontiers, as well as more specialized journals such as uh, Metabolomics and Metabolites. Uh, metabolites is the recommended uh, metabolomics repository for a leading number of journals, as well as for Elixir, um, which is the European Life Sciences um, infrastructure. And uh, there we play a role of the recommended uh, deposition database. So the database and repository, it captures all metabolomics data across the entire workflow. So we're talking um, sample collection, sample preparation, data acquisition, data interpretation. We are um, cross species, so be that um, animal, plant or bacteria samples. We are cross technique um, and platforms and so, so mass spectrometry and NMR analysis. Um, we're constantly evolving to support all the latest advancements. You know, this is a, a constant, a continuous open discussion. Um, and all our requirements are guided by the community. And we're open access and discoverable, uh, not just within the metabolomics domain, but um, outside the metabolomics domain also. Most importantly, as an archive, we collect the raw data together with, you know, with all the sample and protocol details. So that, so that the data can be reused and reanalyzed by anyone. You know, this is a really rich data source for um, you to access without having to go into the lab. As mentioned, the database um, was developed and is still being developed in conjunction with the metabolomics community um, to create a resource which aligns with community standards. Um, so for example, the metabolomics standards initiative guidelines and the proteomics um, initiative, um, proteomics standards initiative. Um, and uh, as mentioned, the primary requirement for study submission is the raw data um, supported by the ri uh, rich metadata describing the study uh, samples, assays, and metabolites. Um, where possible, all this metadata capture is underpinned by controlled uh, vocabularies or ontologies. And together, this represents many of the attributes of good data management, um, as um, introduced in the um, as outlined in the Fair Data Principles previously. Why um, should we annotate data with ontologies? Well, the main reason is to give um, to give semantics to the data and make it easy easier to visualize, easier to query in a meaningful way, and easier to integrate with other data. So this means, you know, sourcing, this means we can source definitions such as when we use a dictionary, we can organize 
into a tree and we can navigate the hierarchy up from the parent to the child. We can explore relationships um, and synonyms. And at Metabolites, annotating the metadata with ontologies um, works through API endpoints um, and based on resources such, um, such as OLS, um, which is Emble's EBI's ontology lookup service, BioPortals, and Zuma. Um, OLS and BioPortals are just ontology repositories that aim you know, to be a single point of access to the latest versions. And Zuma is a tool that takes free text annotations um, to ontology terms based on curated, um, based on a curated repository of um, annotations, um, knowledge, and, and confidence. Uh, Metabolites uses ontologies for um, areas such as species and organism, organism part, sample details and, and factors, um, instrumentation, and, and metabolites. And importantly, um, this is adding value to studies, you know, with the additional expert curation and confidence and, and evidence attributions. So let's take a closer look at metabolites. There are various ways to find information through the website. Um, from the homepage, you can search or browse through the studies and metabolites. Um, you can browse areas of interest, including studies, compounds, species. You can use our model organism links to find specific studies and compounds. Um, and you can also search based on uh, specific terms and, and free text. Uh, looking specifically at the study repository, as repository, again, you can search based on um, specific terms and free text. You can browse the areas of interest. Um, but within studies, you can go a little bit further and filter based on technology and organism part. Um, the results will display key information about the study title, you know, the unique identifier, um, MTBLS equals the metabolites identifier. You'll find the size, submitter, organism, and any study factors. And you simply click on the title or the identifier to um, view the complete study. This, what does a metabolite study look like? Here's an example, MTBLS 749. And the first page you will see um, is all the study level metadata. Um, one of the first things you will see will be the study status. So when you first submit two metabolites, the status will be highlighted as submitted. Um, and then the study progresses through in curation um, to in review and finally public. Um, next to the study status, you will see the release date. And this is when the um, study became public. Um, underneath is the study title, um, the submitter um, and authors, um, and abstract. There's a box to highlight the species or organism and the option to link to associated publications, um, which can be updated at any time, as well as other associated resources um, in, in, um, in the public domain, such as uh, Metaspace for mass spec imaging. Following this, you'll see a section of tabs that will guide you through all the study information from, sec from sections for uh, descriptors, protocols, samples, assays, metabolites, and files. Uh, in the first tab, the descriptors, you will find information describing the study. So you can think of these as important search terms. Um, and you also find an overview of the study factors. And study factors are just variables that help to describe the samples as part of experimental design. Um, where possible, uh, keywords and factors um, are linked to ontologies and controlled vocabularies. And these, these are guided by the online submission tool. Um, options will appear for you to choose, um, submitters to choose. Uh, in the next tab, the protocols, you will find information related to the experimental protocols. Uh, the level of detail required is identical to the methods and materials section in a paper. For example, um, where samples um, came from, how they were extracted or prepared, um, through to how they were analyzed, the treatment of the data, and methods used for identification. Uh, the, central, the protocols are really central for reproducibility. And um, 
here they're sub they're in subsections and these are often and these subsections are linked to the assays um, with important parameters these these are used as tags these, these are column or headers to help improve the data fairness you know the readability and the reusability significantly um, and on the metabolites website there's all um, guidance on on um, how to um, complete it, it, what kind of information metadata we've got at each um, subsection. In the third tab, the samples tab, um, you will find specific um, structured text mineable information related to the samples. So, you know, looking at the description of the biomaterial used in the experiment. Um, there is one sample sheet um, for one sample sheet per study, and each row is a distinct sample. And this includes samples for QCs, controls, and standards, as well as you know the, the classic experimental examples. Um, the minimum information required about a sample is required and is, is represented in the name and characteristic fields. Um, you know, these these are this, the distinguishing quali qualities and, and aspects of the um, person, object, or uh, process substance, you know, that's um, used. So there are columns for organism, um, an organism part, for example. And then as before, the submitters are, um, are encouraged to add additional information in the form of factors. So this is um, such as the disease, the gender, the, the time uh, or treatment. Um, and in accordance with the metabolomics standards initiative and, and the core information for metabolomics reporting, um, there are templates um, have been developed for the deposition of more specific information. So this is depending on your sample source. So whether you have um, in vitro samples or plant samples, uh, clinical samples, et cetera. Um, and we're implementing these on, on an ongoing basis. Uh, again, Metabolites uses ontologies um, throughout. So um, with the new website and online submission, this is all hidden from the standard view, but obvious if you have ever downloaded a file to edit offline in Excel or use the expand table option. And, and really there are three columns are included for each ontology supported field. One is for the, the term of interest, so, so the organism. One is for the ontology used, um, the term source. Um, and one is the I uh, use for the direct link to the word in, in the ontology, the, the term accession. So for example, here, um, we you can see that we are using um, Homo sapiens from NC, from the NCBI um, taxon, uh, NCBI taxon ontology, um, which is the National Center for Biotechnology Information um, classification. Um, and we're also using um, cerebr cerebral spinal fluid from the BTO ontology, which is the branded tissue and enzyme source ontology. Um, often we encourage submitters to add one sample with the online editor, which will guide the, you know, your ontology selection, and then you, the sample sheets can be downloaded and completed offline locally, um, copy and pasting from your from spreadsheets that you have, for example. Um, and again, why is this important? Um, because we asked, um, please name the species in MTBS, MTBS1, and we got a range of different um, answers. So um, this is this becomes really important, especially when we talk about uh, naming our metabolites, for example. In the fourth tab, assays, you will find um, specific structured uh, text mineable information related to the assays. <clears throat> Here, uh, for each sample, the specific instrument information is provided in detail. So for example, you know, the, the chromographic system used, uh, any column specifications, the mass spectrometer, um, and together, and this is with together with the data files. So the, these are the raw or derived data files, giving you the opportunity to download and, and reanalyze the work with, again, with, without entering the lab. If you look a little closer, you will see that the assay is divided into sections, starting with a, a protocol reference column. And this describes the specifics of the part of the assay or protocol um, with controlled vocabulary, again, to improve the data fairness so that studies um, using the same approach are easily findable. 
Um, when you add a technique, there are templates for a range of assays. Um, in this case, it's an LCMS positive mode helic assay. Um, and as you scroll across the assay sheet, uh, through all the columns and tags associated with the protocols, you will see all the details for the corresponding data files and metabolite tables. Uh, we have two types of data files. One is the raw spectral data files, and these are the files directly from the analytical platform or instrument. And the other one is the derived spectral data files, and these include an open source convertible file or any other derived file you may wish to include from, from, from software outputs, for example. And again, you know, the primary requirement for our submission to metabolites is, is the raw data or an open sourced version, such as, you know, the MZML uh, file, along again with, with all the supporting metadata. Um, and of course, you, a study can have multiple assays, you know, for example, we often see people doing positive and negative mode um, ionization. Um, people will do reverse phase and hillic acquisitions, GC and, and LC, and, and you know, uh, 1D uh, proton NMR and, and um, 1D carbon NMR or, or you know, um, 2D um, NMR. In the fifth tab, the, um, the metabolites tab, you will find information related to the metabolites identified in the study. So here, um, each row is a metabolite or metabolite feature peak unknown. And there are columns for structural information. So the, these are ones for like smiles and inchy. Um, there are columns for the descriptors for the metabolites, um, as well as for um, intensity values or metabolite abundances. And these metabolite sheets are also known as the metabolite assignment file or the math file. Um, .tsv um, files. Where metabolites have been identified, um, the provided compound name are assigned to a specific ID. Again, I mentioned before using the Kebi ontology. And this is a controlled ontology, which means that the metabolites you are looking for can be easily identified and linked with other information and also integrated with other omics. So uh, kebi at um, ebi.ac.uk forward slash kebi is a free and manually annotated database of chemical entities of biological interest, aka the small molecules. There's over um, 160,000 entries um, currently, and kebi provides a unique and stable identifier. You can extract the names and nomenclature, such as the UPAC, um, Cinnamons, brands, etc. You can extract structures, 2D and 3D. Um, we could get properties, formula, you know, such as formula, charge, mass, um, all the inches and smiles. Um, we can get species information, organism strain tissue, as well as citations and cross references to other databases. And as well, um, it it has an ontology classification based on chemical classes and groups, as well as biological roles um, exhibited. Um, so in the metabolite sheet, I said we we have um, uh, columns for um, smiles, um, inchy, um, which are you know international standards to describe um, chemicals. Um, and then submitters are also encouraged to submit further information um, in relation to the metabolite identification. So you know for NMR this includes chemical shift and, and multiplicity uh, for mass spec. Um, this includes master charge, fragmentation, modifications, char uh, uh, charge state, and retention time. And for all platforms, it's encouraged that the identification reliability score is provided um, and the results and the derived results, for example. And of course, you can have multiple metabolite sheets or maths. Um, in the last tab, the files, you will find all both the metadata information, which is uploaded information previously described. Um, and this is encoded in the open source ISID tab, the ISID tab delimited standard, um, as well as um, the raw and derived data files. 
So all public studies and associated data in metabolites are freely available uh, to download. Um, you can download individual files or whole folders, or you can search for specific files and file types. Um, below, there is also a section named audit files. This acts like a version control to keep track of all the changes. Um, and while it's not obvious, um, metabolites, uh, kind of mentioned previously, is, is powered by ISA. So all the data gets submitted in ISA tab, and, and, and ISA is uh, the investigation study assay framework, and it helps to collect and communicate rich and complex experimental data. So, you know, sample characteristics, technology and measurement types, you know, the sample to data relationships. And it's really a result means that the resulting data and the discoveries are reproducible and, and reusable, you, you know, the fair principles. And this standard is comparable to other standards in the uh, in other omics, such as you know the maze tab for transatomics. Um, and again, the, the the standard can be downloaded and edited offline using Excel, for example, and re-uploaded. Um, and if you and to see the raw data, you can um, go to the uh, raw derived file section and and um, expand the folders. Um, to see all the data files. Um, so what can you do? We did a little exercise for the um, grape community um, a, a few years back, and, this, and you can really pull out some really um, powerful statistics. You know, for example, you can say how, how many samples um, had, the, had the organism uh, vitus. Uh, there was, at that time, uh, 3,821 samples. There was 184 gigabytes worth of data uh, at metabolites. There was 16 plus, 16,000 um, plus metabolite features um, within the database. You could see who were the um, submitting countries, you know, Italy, the prime submitters here. Um, you could get a, a sense of the um, analytical landscape, you know, from all the different UPLC methods to the HPLC methods to GC methods to EDMR. And you can get a real picture of all the different factors that, um, uh, that the community are, are looking to explore, you know, from uh, different treatments to, 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 the, the cultivate, to the cultivate, to the time, to the date, to the year, to the vineyard, um, for example. So uh, you can submit studies to us through the a new guided submission, um, which is step by step for you and uh, the online editor tool. And the online editor tool allows you to come back and edit your study at any stage during the submission process. Um, and this is under the My Studies page. Um, we're working with larger metabolomic um, service providers, such as the, um, such as the National, uh, UK National Phenome Centre, and other core facilities um, and also companies to have like a developed template driven submission pipeline um, for ease of um, standard protocols and assays. And for example, you can utilize tools such as MDML to ISA to direct, to extract um, protocol information from directly from the raw data files. Um, and we're, we're trying to um, automate this a lot more um, as well. So um, all studies are manually curated for high quality and um, we support submitters through a highly responsive help desk and a study will remain uh, private and between you and the metabolites team until you tell us otherwise. And a reminder that there are four stages, you know, um, submission, which is really creation of, of, of your study, um, curation, uh, review and public. Um, on the website, there's a quick start guide to help um, and explain the whole process in a little more depth. Um, the first step is to create an account um, and then create a new study, um, add, edit, and upload your data, then to clear study validation and start curation, and then to um, go into review, which is a temporary private read-only link, which you can also share with peer reviewers, and then finally publication. Um, so we are working hard to you provide the simplified submission system. So now you can enter, you, you can now submit and edit your whole study completely online without needing to um, interact previously 
with the local submission system. And uh, once again, the guided submission um, is is available, um, and we are looking to you know continuously improve it. Um, and you can switch between the um, guided submission and, and the uh, editor view, study overview editor. I, I won't go too much into this. Um, for the um, working in larger laboratories with, um, yeah, we have the APIs. You may be interested in, in hitting the APIs to help you um, automate some of this process. Um, as mentioned before, once a study is created, it will appear in your My Studies page. And from here, you can edit and upload, you know, using the guided submission or study overview options. And again, studies can be downloaded, edited locally using Excel and then re-uploaded. Um, a note on study completion and validation rules. You must ensure that your study passes all the required validations. If the study displays any failed, please look at the study validations to, uh, to find out more. There, you know, there are four validation flags in the study validations tab. Um, which can be viewed manually using the drop down menu. We have successful uh, information, warnings, and errors. You must address all the errors, um, and you should also address all the warnings where applicable. You know, and these validation rules range from missing data to defined, to defined headers, character lengths, unique IDs, file types, referencing, and so on. And, and, and before you can progress uh, this, all, and, it, and before um, before you're progressing the study to in curation, which is just a step to assess whether the study is complete and fulfills the requirements of metabolites. So then looking specifically at the compound knowledge base, um, this is all uh, a work in progress, so I won't spend too much to go into depth today, but just to show you some of the key information we're working to uh, collect and you can extract already. Um, again, you can search based on specific terms and free text. You can browse areas of interest such as species, pathways, reactant, reactions, um, NMR, mass spec. Here is an example of a compound reference, uh, acetoacetol-CoA. So at the top, you will have uh, the compound name and the unique metabolites ID for it, followed by another series of tabs that will take you through all the information related to the compound. Uh, in the first tab, you will find all the information related to chemistry. So, you know, the, the structure, formula, the masses, the inchi, and the smiles. And this is heavily aligned again with the KEBI database, the, the database for chemical entities of biological interest. In the second tab, you will find the information related to biology. So, here you'll find information specific to species, um, studies, MTBLS. Yeah, MTBLS studies and any publications information. At uh, the third tab, you will find information related to pathways from multiple sources, such as uh, wiki pathways, keg, uh, reactome, and, and there'll be a drop down menu to help you filter uh, uh, for specific pathways and species. Again, through, through keg uh, and reactome. Um, the fourth tag, you will find all the information related to reactions. So this is reaction specific um, data linked to the RIA database. Um, again, and there'll be drop down menus for you to filter uh, down the reactions. And again, the fifth tab, you will find information related to literature. Um, this is from the um, Europe MC, which is uh, EMBO EBI also, and the results will be you know, abstracts to explore further for you. So. Um, Again, each section is continuously being updated and open to feedback. And what we're trying to help the metabolomics community to do is to navigate, you know, this complex space of, of um, interpretation. Once I have an ID, um, I'm, I might go to get chemical information from, I might have a PubChem ID identifier. How, what kind of information can I extract from there? I might have a KEBI identifier. I might have multiple KEBI identifiers um, that are all linked to React and Rio and Uniprop. There'll be wiki pathways to integrate also, such as, and also other databases such as BioPsych, KEG, HM, the HMDB world, uh, lipid maps, for example. Um, we work very closely with a number of other repositories in the metabolomics domain, um, such as uh, Metabolomics Workbench in, in the US, uh, MetaboBank in Japan, and GMPS Massive um, also in um, USA. So public studies on metabolites are also shared and exported with um, 
Metabolomics Exchange, which is an initiative set up to provide and aggregate um, notification services for the metabolomics community, as well as Omics, uh, Omics DI, which is a cross Omics aggregator. At, uh, Metabolites, one of our primary focuses is multi Omics. So we're looking at how we can integrate with all the other Omics. And at EBI, we're lucky because we have all the different databases. You know, we have ENA for genomics data, nucleotide sequence data. We have PRIDE for the proteomics data. We have Magnify for the raw sequence data and associated metadata. And what's really powerful now is that um, we can start to think about linking data at the sample level. So here was a really nice EU example, which was the hollow food example, which had data types from biosamples, ENA, Magnify, and Metabolites all linked at the sample level, um, where you it's and freely available for the community to go and have a look at. It was put into a data portal, um, which shows you exactly how to get extract data for one sample across all the EBI resources. Um, and there are notebooks as well um, for the community to um, go and check out. Um, and this was all um, in collaboration with our colleagues at Magnify for metagenomic analysis. Uh, we have other research grants. We spent a lot of time um, in the past couple of years to try to get to build standardized metabolite annotation workflows for enhancing biological interpretation in metabolomic data repositories. So putting metabolites into the galaxy ecosystem. This was done with the University of Liverpool, Imperial College um, and EMBL EBI. And the idea here is to, we've built um, a new tool to um, index data at metabolites to bring it into the galaxy infrastructure to um, then allow the community to use their workflows on metabolites data easily. So they already have their uh, workflows in galaxy. They just provide, uh, plug in a new tool that takes the raw data files, produces, you know, um, MZML files that then they can plug into their um, tools. Uh, we have an extension of this, which we're excited about, which will include the UC San Diego group, and in particular, the uh, GMPS ecosystem, where we will be linking, um, we'll be linking mass spectrometry, the, the two mass spectrometry computational ecosystems to enhance biological insights of publicly available data. So this means uh, data at, uh, metabolites will be integrated into the GMPS ecosystem um, more comprehensively, more granular, and that that, that um, outputs will be then be available on the Metabolites website for um, users to come and explore further. We do a lot of outreach and training. Um, uh, for example, we have workshops at, at the international conference, uh, the international conferences. We go to ASMS and, and the Metabolomics um, International Conference this year in Osaka. Will be there and we host um, webinars and in-person co courses so it, in may we have our um, four-day introduction to metabolomic analysis um, if you have any we if you have any um, i will direct you to the ebi training and you can search for uh, metabolomics and we have our training material there for you to look um, to help you guide and, and give you information about uh, metabolites um, and I'll uh, just leave you with this slide about the other data resources at EMBL EBI. You, you know, there are great data resources across chemicals, uh, molecules, and drug discovery from genes, genomes, and RNA, proteins, imaging, and cellular structure, uh, cellular structure through to genetic variation and disease data and, and literature and knowledge uh, management. Um, and uh, yeah, we're only a small team of, um, so please do be patient with us. Do reach out to us to uh, metabolites-health at um, ebi.ac.uk. Um, yeah, and then I'm uh, yeah, happy to take any questions that um, you guys have. Fantastic, thanks, Thomas. Um, it's really good to see such a wide range of people using the service already. Uh, hopefully after this webinar, maybe we can see Australia bump up into those top 10 submitting countries as well. Um, yeah, that, so that would be great now. Start with a, a pre-submitted question. So um, one person's asked, are the studies, once they are public, are they ever updated down the track? 
Um, yes, they are. We're hoping that, um, so often what we find is that um, older st studies, we're helping to clean them up a little bit. Um, and sometimes the ontologies and, and the vocabulary um, evolves. So, you know, there might not be a, have been a term previously for older studies, but now there is an ontology term. So we're, we're always constantly looking to um, clean up the data and link it to ontologies, you know, make it more powerful and, and, and it be able to integrate properly. Um, and we have that version control there. So you can go back and you can see all the different version um, edits there. And also with the new, um, with our grants, you know, bringing metabolites into Galaxy, linking with GMPS Massive. Um, we hope to, you know, bring all the, we hope to older studies with all the data there. And as more and more, you know, public data comes into the domain, especially around the spectral libraries, we hope to, you know, really improve uh, the, and really improve annotations. Um, and uh, bring new annotations in, into the um, ecosystem. You know, this is really, we're hoping to really build like a living data um, ecosystem here that, that will help again to um, enrich the metabolite knowledge base. Fantastic, it's great to see it constantly being updated. Um, so we'll go to some live questions that are coming in through the, the Q and A box. And if you've got more questions, please do type them in there. Um, so firstly, one person's wondering about the search functionality specifically, are they able to search by chemical structure or maybe chemical substructure even? Um, at the moment, not directly on the website, we're looking to um, improve this um, and to build this capability in, um, but we, the metabolites um, compounds are very coupled to the Kebi ontology. So if you find your compound in metabolites, you can directly easily um, find it in Kebi. And then through Kebi, you can you can use the Kebi ontology to, you know, search for um, or to aggregate based on chemical classes or any other um, biological roles, for example. So there is that one to one map in between metabolites and Kebi. And we're looking to yeah bring that into our compound library in the future. Fantastic. If one person submits protein, metabolites, and RNA data all from the same study. Is there a way that all of these different repositories can link these data sets together? Yes. So I, I did skip it a little bit. I wanted to show a little bit more. But um, yeah, this is exactly what happened during the Hollow Food um, project. So there is this one sample that has, um, you know, histology data that has the host uh, genomic data that has the metagenomic data and has untargeted metabolomics data. And uh, at Envoy EBI, this works, um, can work through a, a few different mechanisms, but if you're specifically looking to um, link at the sample level, um, we use um, the biosamples archive here. So this means, um, and this is the first point of call, um, we do this for, we did this for Hollow Foods and, and we'll be doing this for Trek, which is another Envoy um, global initiative for multiomics data. Um, and um, yeah, we, we will work with you. So get in contact, we'll work with you to um, use the biosamples to has the first entry point. So you get a unique ac accession for your samples, which you then give to the individual resources. So you give to Pride, you give to Metabolites, you give ENA. And that means you can use this one accession to extract across all the different EBI um, data types. Yeah. And this is exactly what they did in the Hollow Food data portal. Brilliant. And do you mind just navigating to the to the contact details again so that people can, if they need to contact you with that sort of thing? Yeah, sorry, Sam. Thank you. Um, another question that's come in here is where can they find out more about the submission API on your on your website? Yes. So if you get if you get in contact with us, we can uh, the URL is is available um, on the website, um, and then there they uh, you can go to the you know the Swagger endpoint, and then you'll have all the um, all the endpoints there, and, and there'll be a description of the endpoints there. Um, we're trying to make it a bit cleaner, you know, break it into subsections, and to have different um, servers for different um, roles. Um, so you can go, yeah, you can go to the, uh, I think on the um, slide that I put the address to the um, Swagger endpoint, or you can just Google it and you'll get to the Metabolites API endpoints. Um, and then if there's something specific you want, a use case you're specifically answering, you need a little bit more guidance, then again, just reach out to us 
and one of our software developers will um, be more than happy to help you if you're thinking about automating the submission, for example. Um, we'll, we'll be doing this with um, the Ember Core facility, for example. Right, great. And the slides will be published on Zenodo in the coming weeks, so you'll be able to refer back to, to those links that Thomas is talking about there. Um, so we've got a, a few more pre-submitted questions that came in. Um, so one person was wondering if they're able to, when they're looking at a single metabolite, are they able to see all the different organisms where that's been identified or perhaps even search specifically for organisms where metabolites have been identified within? Uh, yeah, so at the moment there's um, lots of different um, places you can you can go to to search for that information. Um, and uh, ideally, uh, the metabolites knowledge base, will, uh, the compound library will be a place you can come to, 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 you know, to link off to all this information and even to search. So at the moment, we can search for, uh, you know, is this metabolite, where is this metabolite found in this organism at metabolites? But you can also get, you can also search Kebi for that information and, and Kebi extracts it from metabolites, but also extracts it from literature as well. You know, at what papers were this um uh, metabolite um, annotated in um, and then you can also go to you know other resources such as HMDB HMDB will have some um, organism specific information too um, so yeah and also I believe PubChem also has some um, organism information too um, and there'll be you know new initiatives especially in the US to try to uh, you know to build more knowledge around the non model organisms you know looking at which exactly which microbes does this metabolite um is associated with you know which food products is this metabolite associated with and which drug products etc yeah fantastic yeah it's great to see how interconnected metabolites is with, with all these other resources um so we might have time for one more question so talking again about publications and and reusing of data if someone has reused data that's available on metabolites how would they go about citing that study and citing metabolites yeah so what we often say is um the metabolites um you can cite for metabolites we say just cite you know our publication we, we released one um the end of last year or the beginning of this year which was an updated version of, of the current activities um and then in your manuscript what uh, we suggested to make sure that you explicitly a mention or all, all the IDs because then this becomes um, not really good for us to show that you submitters that uh, or us to easily extract and show submitters that their data is being reused you know your accession was um, was found in this publication that's not your publication and and this is one way that we're starting to show submitters um, about you know citation citations of their data sets reuse of their data set in this in this publication, this ID was found. We can do this all, with can do this all um, automated through um, the Europe MC database at Ember EBI, and we look at those differences, and then we can say, okay, which studies are being used, and we can report that back to the to the submitter. Yes, yeah, so that's what we suggest. Awesome, thanks very much, Thomas. Um, so we'll leave it there for today. So once again, I'd like to express our thanks to Thomas for joining us today and, and walking through Metabolites. It looks like an absolutely fantastic resource for Metabolites researchers to use. Um, this webinar is part of a series of our bioinformatics training events that we organise at Australian Biocommons, and you can keep up to date at, through the links on your screen and find out about our upcoming webinars and workshops and other events, and also watch recordings on our YouTube channel. Um, our next webinar, we're going to welcome Michael from Syro's Data61 to give us a practical guide for AI tools for life scientists. Lastly, we'd like to acknowledge our funders. Australian Biocommons is enabled by the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy via Bioplatforms Australia funding. Thanks very much for joining us and watching today. We hope you enjoyed listening to Thomas's presentation and we hope to see you next time. Until then, Goodbye.